Welcome to this YSL tutorial. In this video we're going to explain how to share class modules in Excel VBA. So the video is all about how you can make your class modules available to other VBA projects. So we'll start by explaining the scope of a class module and where you can reference it from once you first created it. Then we'll talk about how you can set references to other VBA projects. We'll talk about the instancing property of a class which makes it exposed to external VBA projects. Then we'll explain how you can create new instances of your class from other VBA projects, which isn't quite as simple as it should be. And then as a final nice way to wrap up your classes and distribute them, we'll talk about briefly how you can create an Excel add-in. In the previous video in this series, we looked at how to use a class module to design your own class of object. And the example we used was to design a class which represented a film object for our list of data. So in the Visual Basic Editor, we have a class module called Film, and if I open that up it has some basic properties such as the film's title, has a couple of simple methods such as adding the film to the list. So this works beautifully in the context of this workbook. Now one of the small limitations of writing a class module is that it's only available to the project in which you create it. So in this new workbook, Book 2, which has a VBA project associated with it, I couldn't currently reference this Film class. So in this video we're going to look at how you can make your class modules available to all projects so that you can reuse them. To begin with, you'll need a project which contains at least one class module. So if you followed along with the previous video for example, you'll already have the film class module. If not, we can create a simple test class, so I can right click into the project and choose to insert a class module. And I'll call the class something similar like test class and I'll create a simple method in there that will display, say, a message on screen. So I can create a public sub called show message. And in this method, I'm just going to simply display a message box, which will show the message, this is a class. <laughs> None of which is particularly exciting or interesting, um, but it's enough to demonstrate the principle of sharing class modules. What I'd like to be able to do next is write some code in my second VBA project which will reference my film class or my test class. So I'm going to start by right clicking and inserting a normal code module into that project and then I can create a subroutine which I can call uh, use class from another project. Fairly descriptive. And what I'd like to be able to do in here is declare a variable which can hold either an instance of a film class or a test class. So I'd like to be able to say dim uh, f as film, for example, although you see that won't appear in the IntelliSense list, or dim x as test class, but again that won't appear. So in order to make this code available, these classes available to another project, what we first of all have to do is set a reference to our class module project from our current project. Now I've got a small problem if I, if I attempt to do that. If I select my second VBA project, head to the Tools menu and choose References, there will be a reference and, and the, the option to select or set a reference to my VBA project, which references my Top Movies one. If I select that item in the list, you can see it references my Top Movies 2012 project. But if I check the box and then click OK, I'll find that that name already conflicts with an existing project. If I hit OK at that point, every single VBA project that, that begins starts with the name VBA project. And you can't reference VBA project from VBA project, then it is just simply too confusing. So what we need to do is we need to make sure that our class project has a unique name. So I can select VBA project Top Movies 2012 and then use the properties window to modify it to a different name. So I'm going to call this one um, class module project. When I've done that, I can select my second project again, head to the Tools menu and choose References. I should see that I've got a Class Module Project item in my list now. I can check the box for Class Module Project and click OK to set the reference. So I'll see that in my second project I'll have a new folder called References and that will have a reference to Top Movies 2012. Now even though we have a reference to our class module project, we still can't yet reference the classes themselves. If I tried to create a variable which, uh, which stores an instance of a film class, I can say dim f as film, I still won't find the word film in my IntelliSense list. And the reason for that is one of the properties of the class modules hasn't been set to allow it to be referenced from outside its original project. So if I select either my film class or my 
test class, you'll see that as well as having a name property, a class module has a property called instancing, and they're both set to private, and that's the default setting. So if I want to be able to reference this class from outside of its current project, I need to change the instancing property so that it says public, not creatable. So I'll do that for both the test class and the film class. And what I can then do in my second project is I can say dim f as film, and I'll see film appears in the IntelliSense list. And I can also say dim t as test class, and that also appears in the IntelliSense. So setting the instancing property of a class is essential to making it available outside of its current project. Now we're still not quite there yet. There's one other problem we need to have come with our class modules. Once you've declared variables to hold a reference to an instance of a class, you then need to create that new instance. So for example, for my film, I would say set f equals new film. And for my test class, I'd say set t equals new test class. Now, although I can write the code that does that and the, the names of the classes appear in the IntelliSense list, if I try to execute this subroutine, so if I use the F8 key to begin stepping through, I'm immediately presented with a compile error saying that I'm not allowed to create new instances of a film or of a test class if I solve that problem. And the reason for that is, or the clue to the, to the reason for that problem, is in the instancing property of the class module. If I select the film class, you'll see that the instancing property I said public not creatable. So although I can reference my film class from another project, I can't, in that project, create new instances of the class. So in order to get around this problem, what we need is, in the class module project itself, we need something which can return a new instance of any class module. So the standard solution to that is to create a function that can be called from outside of the class module project, which will return the new instances of the class. We need to create these new functions inside the class module project. So I'm going to do that by inserting a normal code module, which I'm going to rename and I'm going to call mine class functions. And in here, I need to write one function for each class module that I want to return an instance of. So I'm going to start with my film class. I'm going to create a public function, which I'm going to call something along the lines of create new film instance and I'm going to make sure that this function returns its value as a film. Now there's a single line of code in this function that returns the new instance of a film class. So it's, I'm going to say set create new film instance equals new film. And it's as simple as that. And I can do exactly the same thing for my test class as well. So I can create another public function, which I'm going to call create new test class instance. Your Function names can be much shorter than this if you prefer. Um, and I'm going to call it, uh, it's going to return a value as a test class. And the single line of code in there will be set create new test class instance equal to a new test class. So that's the functions created. We now need to use these functions in our second project to return the new instances of our, of our classes. So let's head back to the module in our second VBA project. And we need to replace the lines which try to return a direct new instance of our classes with a call to the functions we've just created. So instead of saying set f equals new film, what I need to do instead is say set f equals, and if I press control and space to display the IntelliSense list, it will make it easier to reference my function create new film instance. And I can do exactly the same thing for my test class, replace new test class with a call to my create new test class instance. And what we'll be able to see happen is if I step through this routine now, is that when I execute this line of code, it will call the function that I've created to return the new instance of my film class. And it also triggers any initialized routines in there as well, um, which I should have realized. So this is going to go through and set default properties for all of my, um, or default values for all the, these properties. And there we go. And then when all that ends, it returns and it, it goes to the next line. This will call the new instance of my test class. There isn't an initialized routine in that one, so that one will work fairly quickly. Um, it's all a little bit convoluted, isn't it? Um, but sadly, this is the process you have to go through to make your class modules available to other projects. The beauty now is that any project that you've used to set a reference to your class module project, you can create new instances of your, of your classes and use all their properties and methods just as though you created it in the same project. 
Now one small limitation of setting references to other workbooks is that that workbook then has to remain open in order to use any of the code. So any of the code I've written here that references my classes, my class modules stored in another workbook, I can run the code happily while that workbook's open. But if I even try to close down the workbook that contains the class modules, I'll be informed that I can't do that. So if I try to do this, I can't close it down because it's referenced by another VBA project. So potentially a neater solution to store your class modules rather than in just a normal workbook, you can create an Excel add-in that holds your class modules and set references to that instead. Now we've dealt with class modules, uh, sorry, we've dealt with um, creating add-ins in a previous video, but just to quickly go over the process for how it would work with a class module, I'm going to show you how to do that again here. To start with, I'm going to close down my book to workbook altogether. So back in Excel, it doesn't have anything in it other than the code I've written to test my class modules. So I'm going to close that one down and I'm not going to bother saving the changes. Then I'm going to create a brand new blank workbook. So I can do that by pressing Control and N to create a new workbook. And I'm going to use this one to generate my add-in. Once I've created the workbook, I'm going to go back to the VB editor. And what I need to do in this new workbook is I need to make copies of the class modules that I want to reuse. So the simplest way to do that is to just click and drag the class modules from their original project and drop them into the new project. So I'll see that my new classes or my class copies of my class modules get added to the class modules folder automatically. I also need to make sure that I've got a copy of my class functions as well. So I'm going to drag my class functions um, module into there so that I can return new instances of my class. I can then close down my top movies project altogether. So I'm going to go back to Excel quickly and I'm going to close down my top movies project and I'll save the changes to that one. And then back to the VB editor again. I'm going to make sure that this project has a unique name. So I'm going to call it VBA project. I'm going to call it, um, I'm going to call it class modules add-in. And it has all the code stored in there that I need. What I need to do next is save it as an add-in file. So I can do that from Excel if I switch into Excel and I can either head to the file menu and choose save or click save or press the F12 key on the keyboard, any option you want to choose to save your file. I'll need to provide a file name and a location, but before I do that, I'm going to change the type of workbook to an Excel add-in. So add-ins, as we saw in the previous video, allow you to save, save the code of a workbook without saving the workbook itself. So if I choose Excel add-in, Excel AM, I'll automatically be switched into the add-ins folder. So it's part of your roaming user profile. You don't have to save it here, but it's a sensible place to do it. You can save your, your add-ins anywhere you like. I'm going to save mine in my add-ins folder just because it makes life convenient and easy. And I'm going to change the name of my add-in from book three. I'm going to call it uh, I'm going to call it class modules add-in. Well, if I can spell class properly, that would help. Class modules add-in. So it doesn't really matter if it has the same name as the as the VBA project. So once I've saved that add-in, you'll notice that the name of the workbook itself doesn't change. Um, book three hasn't actually been saved at all. All I've saved is the code component of my file as an add-in. So what I need to do next is create another new workbook that I can use to reference my add-in. So I'm actually going to close down book three altogether, and that will close down Excel. And then I'm going to go back to the start menu quickly and open up Excel again. So I'll generate a brand new blank workbook. Now in order to reference any code in my add-in, I first of all need to set a reference to that add-in. So I can do that in one of, one of a couple of different ways. I can go to the file menu and choose options, but I've got the developer tab available here. So if I head to the developer tab, there's a quick shortcut way to get to the add-ins option. So if I choose the add-ins option here. Now because I saved my class modules add-in in the default add-ins folder, it's automatically listed along with all the existing add-ins. If I'd saved it elsewhere, it wouldn't be listed here, but you can click the browse button to browse for wherever you saved it. So all I'm going to do at this point is tick the class modules add-in option and then click OK. And now I have a reference automatically to that add-in. So if there were any functions that I wanted to use in the worksheet, I could use them immediately here. Now I can't use any VBA code in the add-in yet until I've set a reference to it. So if I head into the Visual Basic Editor, you'll see that as well as having my new standard VBA project loaded associated with my blank workbook, I've also got my add-in 
module or my add-in project loaded. And I've got access to all the code stored in there. But what I need to do in order to make that work is I need to set a reference to the my class modules add-ins, just as we did earlier on. Select this extra project, choose tools, references, and then I can tick the box for the class modules add-in and click OK. I'll get a standard reference to my class modules add-in. And then if I create a new normal module in this project, which I'll call sub uh, test classes with an extra S apparently, there we go. And I can declare a variable in here, which will hold an instance of my test class. And then I can say set T equal to uh, my function, create new test class instance. And then I can say t dot show message or use any methods or properties of that class module and everything will just work. If I run the subroutine, it will show me my this is a class message. So again, it's a slightly more long-winded process creating a an, an add-in to hold your class modules, but it keeps the rest of your Excel workbooks neat and tidy. You'll only have workbooks open that you're writing code in, so your class module add-in doesn't show the workbook itself. So it keeps everything else neat and tidy, but still allows you access to shared class modules. If you've enjoyed this training video, you can find many more online training resources at www.wisel.co.uk.